Hi there folks, today we're going to be discussing three things with the HP 10B2 calculator. You can see I have an HP 10B2 Plus, but don't worry, what we're talking about today is not going to be changed. The, the functionality and keys are going to be the exact same on the 10B2 as they are on the 10B2 Plus. So first thing we're going to talk about is two pre-work basics or display basics. Second thing we're going to talk about is two handy functions with the calculator. Third, we're going to talk about two time value money calculations there so first and foremost the display you can see I've got four decimal points that's what many of the financial planning exams require but you can easily change that to two or to any other number all you do is hit the gold key that's what they call it in the manual your display and then two and change it to six if you want for our purposes we're gonna leave it at four because that's what most people want so we've got that it four decimal points so that's what we're looking at here again gold key display and then the number of decimal points you want to display second thing we want to talk about is this one up here this little gold section payments per year on the payments thing there so this is going to impact some of the calculations that you do some people will change that based on the the problem that they're working on I normally just leave it at one and then do the math within the equation and we'll kind of talk a little about what I mean by that here but so that's pretty easy. So all you do is say, for example, let's say it's an, uh, a monthly period that you're calculating. We can do 12, gold key, and then payment per year. And then if you hit the clear and then gold, be, gold button, clear all, that's gives you 12 periods per year. Again, I like to do one, so I'm going to do one, gold key, payment per year. Hit the clear key, clear all. That's gonna be, it shows me I've got the one, one payment per year. You see that right there. Great. So that's the two basics, the pre-work or display basics. Second, I want to show you two handy functions, and they all relate to this key, the percentage and percent change. So the nice thing about that is it does a lot of the math for you. So, for example, let's say we, we want to do a percentage change. Let's say we've got an investment that it beginning value was 43276 and then we're going to hit our input key to save that number because that's our first first uh, initial amount. Now let's say that investment is now worth 54,729. Well, then we hit the gold key, percent change. Well, it gives us a, that our investment went up 26.4650 over that period, whatever the period that was measuring. We weren't concerned with the period in that equation, just with the, the percentage change. So that's the percentage change button, very handy. Um, you can also use the percentage here with the plus and minus key which is very helpful so let's say for example here let me clear all let's say we've got um, some sort of account that's got four thousand three hundred eighty seven dollars in it well let's say it goes up seventeen percent plus seventeen hit a percent well that says went up seven four seven hundred forty dollars and change to a new total of five thousand 132.79 from the original 4,387. So it's just helpful because it saves you time, does some of the math for you. Likewise, let's do one where we're losing money. Let's say we've got an asset that it the initial value was, or initial period was it valued at 184,000, we'll say 392, make it kind of a random number. So some asset valued at 184,392, but let's say in now that was in the past currently or it's gone down 4.3 so we do minus 4.3 percent let's say okay it went down 7,928 or hit the equal sign again that means its new value would be 176,463 versus its original value 184,392 so the percent percentage chain kind of just a couple handy features there or functions so next let's talk a little bit about two basic time value money calculations. So first off, we're going to do real basic here. So we're going to do 5,000. Let's that's our initial amount. Now, if you think about the time value money, what we need here, we need a present or principal amount. We need an interest rate. We need a number of periods. We need some sort of cash flow indicator, and then we need what that future value is going to be. Now, normally it's going to be we've got three or four solving for the fifth. Um, you can see this is our top row right here. So these are the keys that we're going to be using, and it does not really matter what key, uh, what order you punch those keys in. 
But it's important to hit the clear all before you get going here to erase the memory so that it doesn't mess up your new input. So let's say we've got an input or a an investment of 5000 and we're going to do real simple interest here so it's going to be 4.5%. We're going to do 4.5. That's our interest rate per year, annualized rate. Actually, hang on, that did not take here. So we do 5,000 is our present value. Then we're going to do 4.5% is our interest rate. And then we're going to do one year. Now, payment in this case, we're not getting any cash flow or payment, so you can just leave it out, or you can do zero and payment, put it in. I'm just going to leave it out here. We'll do a print uh, future value. That would take the investment to 5,225 from its original 5,000. So 5,000 present value, four and a half interest rate for one year, future value 5,225. So let's try one that's slightly more complicated here. So let's say we've got a loan at 32,500. And that's gonna be our present value because it's a loan we just took out. There's a couple ways to do this. I'm just gonna show you one way here for simplicity's sake there. And so that's our present value. Now let's say it's an annual rate of 7.25. But let's say we're paying that monthly. So all we do is we take the 7.25. Instead of monkeying with the payment per year, we just leave it at 1 and do 7.25 divided by 12. Gives us basically a monthly interest rate. And then let's say that loan is going to be paid back over the course of 5 years. So we're going to do 5 times 12 months. That's our N, or number of periods. And then we're trying to solve for a payment, so zero we need to throw in there for future value because it's going to be paid off. And then payment, that should give us $647 and change. In other words, if we take out that loan of 32500 with an annual rate of 7.25, paying monthly over the course of five years where that loan will be paid off, then our payment would be 647 Now you can see that's a negative number, and we got a negative number in the previous example as well. Um, it's all a matter how you put that in. Again, there's a few different ways to put that in. Disregard the negative sign there. It's really not an issue. When you're trying to solve for the interest rate or something, some other number, sometimes the, the positive and negative numbers do matter, but we'll have to cover that in another video. So I hope this helps. We've covered those three things, the two pre-work or display basics, two handy functions with the percent and percent change, and then two time value money calculations and it gets a little more complex from there. We'll probably do some more examples. Thanks for listening. Hope this helps. Best of luck. Try a few examples on your own.